Here we are in SSIS and we have a very simple control flow. We're purging some records and then we're filling in from SQL Server to QuickBase. The data flow is very simple, SQL Server to QuickBase. However, we want to make sure that we are aware of any errors that occur. So you click over here on the Event Handlers tab. And we already have a send mail task that is informing us of a problem. Uh, if we look at the configuration, we can see that we have a from, a to address, we can uh, specify the subject uh, and the message. However, the problem is that this send mail task depends on a connection, namely this right here. And this SMTP connection is down here under connection managers. And if we look at this, we see that we can only specify the server. We can't specify any username and password. We can use Windows authentication, but that doesn't work with most SMTP servers. So this method only works if your SMTP server allows you to connect to it without presenting any credentials. In order to use a more secure SMTP server that you uh, commonly find in corporate environments, you're going to have to use a script task. So let's do that. We'll drag that over and then we're going to edit that. Now here we can make use of variables. I already have some user variables, two of them, SMTP username and SMTP password. Now we're going to click on, then we're going to choose here Visual Basic instead of the default C Sharp. Then you click on Edit Script. So here we are in the new version of Visual Studio that's just been launched. And we have a, a skeleton of code here. And what we want to do first is we need to bring in the classes that allow us to send email. And that's system.net and system dot net dot mail. Then we go here. Now we're going to paste in some code right here, replacing these comments. The code I've just pasted in here is all boilerplate. Please feel free to type this in to your main routine. Now I'll show you how to configure these variables to make this specific to your particular environment. We want to make sure to save our work before we exit out of here and return back to the original version of Visual Studio where we were creating our SSIS job. We're going to click here in the upper right corner and that brings us back to where we were. Now these read-only variables are very important. They're what allow us to configure the boilerplate. If we look at this, we could see that we already have two user-defined variables that I've created, but we're going to need half a dozen more or so. So let's choose these and they show up here. I'm going to click OK and that brings me back to the main canvas. Up here I can click on this to bring up the variables window. And As you can see I already have two of them. I'm going to create more. I click on this icon up here, add variable, and then we go SMTP server and then we choose string and then we type in our SMTP server. Now this value is something that you will need to get from your IT department as are some of these other values like the port number SMTP port and that should be an integer 587. You're also going to need the from, to, subject, and message body variables. Once you've created all your variables, you can close the variables window, and then you're going to need to go back to the script task into edit mode, and then you're going to have to click here and bring those variables in that you've just created. Message body from to subject 
They're basically all the user variables that you've created. You want to check them all off. The server, the port, and then you're done. You've got a script task now that will send an email when there's an error. We can get rid of this task because it's superfluous and we're done.